What up, everybody? It's your girl, Lunatic Froggy, and today I have my son, Lunatic Toter, or Tadpole, or whatever he wants to be called. Um, We're going to discuss some things with him, and it's important that you really listen to him because it has affected his life. So, Mr. Jordan. <laughs> you put him in my notes. <laughs> you got to be close to it. Okay. What are some of the struggles you've had to deal with uh, with schizophrenia? Uh, be more specific. You've had schizophrenia since you were how old? Eight? Six or eight. Yeah. How did the doctors know that you were schizophrenic? Uh, kind of because, well, I kept on waking up screaming at the top of lungs, my lungs because there was some sort of zombie crawling over my shoulder or some other type of stuff at first. And then what else happened? Then, like, later on, it started going on to ghosts and some other creepy stuff. And murder shows. So basically a bunch of scary shows that I watched and my brain just malfunctioned into reality. Reality. So would you say you live every day in a different world, per se? So like... You have, you see things and do things that regular people wouldn't do. Yeah. Especially with my demon voice. Right. <laughs> people love that one. So, <laughs> on the basis that you have struggled with schizophrenia for almost... 10 years, if not 10 years, 10, uh, 8 to 10 years. Mm -hmm. What is, are you on medication right now? Uh, no, because the state. Do you feel like you need your medication? Not really. Coffee usually helps settle down my nerves, and then I usually can just tell myself nothing's there. Okay. If it ever does pick up. Right. How else do you deal with it? With Because there's a lot of side effects that you have from your schizophrenia. How else do you deal with it without medication? Mm. Either speak up or enjoy it up your nose. Up my nose. <laughs> uh. Uh. So some of the side by now I do it by uh brain like it's a uh, almost close to breathing. It's natural for me to just start doing it if it happens. But uh, one of the ways is just pretty much close my eyes, count to ten, and then reopen them. And then another way is just start fiddling with my fingers like. I usually do if I my anger or anxiety get too high. Right, because your brain overwhelms itself. So, how do you deal with seeing things without your medication and hearing things? Because I know you still hear them. Mm, I still hear them, and I sometimes still see them. Uh, usually, I just think of it. Hello, hi, goodbye, night night. And so basically, you tell them to go to bed. Mm -hmm. What has schizophrenia schizophrenia changed in your life? Well, off the right off of the back, I didn't really like the idea of taking my meds because it made me feel like I was taking actual drugs, and I hate that. And then I f later found out that I had to, like, take it to make sure it doesn't get over the top and my anger, it doesn't mix in and I become 
Jason Voorhees Jr. <laughs> nice way to explain it, but yeah. Uh, so I got used to taking meds for this stuff, and then I just, like, it became a daily thing, but I still forget to take my meds and someone gets on me about it. Right. So, part of schizophrenia is your daily living, like your hygiene and stuff. I sweat a lot. Does that count? No. <laughs> but, like, when you don't have a girlfriend, because I know you really put a lot of effort in when you do have a girlfriend, uh, do you always remember to take a shower or brush your teeth or things like that? Without being, like, yelled at, or not even yelled at, just constantly reminded, oh, yeah, Bubba, you gotta brush your teeth this morning, or, oh, yeah, br Bubba, it's time to take a shower, or it's time to put away your phone, or anything like that, I'm going to usually forget about it. And how, what was your dream of, when, of uh, being when you grew up? Uh, being in the military still is. And how does schizophrenia affect that? Um, I can't really do it. Well, I can because I can do whatever I want as long as I know how to control it the right way and not show it. Right. But it is a law where you cannot join if you have it. Well, it you can, but you have to be able to go off your meds for, like, at least a couple months. Right, because a lot of people who are on it... Um, ha have a hard time living without their meds. Mm -hmm. Do you think the way Dad and I have raised you has helped you with living without your meds? I mean, yeah. Dad, Dad is uh more the dad that teaches me work ethics and other stuff that I'll need for jobs and other stuff. And as he says, what come makes a good boss is a good employee. So he also teaches me stuff like that. And then mom is more on the uh, checking bu checking book balances because she usually pays all the bills. And she sometimes she has me sit down and watch her just tee <laughs> with all the bills. And um, man, I hate my voice. Uh, <laughs> uh, what was I about to say? Last you tried to <laughs> And then, um, can we just edit in the little circle thingy right here? <laughs> anyway, how has us... As parents, the way we teach you, helped you live every day with schizophrenia. Dad and you have mainly taught me how to, uh, mainly, like, sensorize how I take care of, like... Yourself. Myself. Animals. And animals. The house. The house. And then sensorize on what I'm seeing and for... More and all for of that. as if I like go up to my teacher one day and say hey there's a guy there that is telling me to you I'm going to get put in a mental hospital well no because <laughs> you are diagnosed with schizophrenia but they would definitely kick you out of school and consider you a threat yes so I yeah. Do you hear voices that tell you to do bad things? I hear them, I just don't apply. Do you, well, part of the reason that we found out you were schizophrenia, or you had schizophrenia, was because you ran away. Yeah. Because the voices told you to run away. Do you know the rarity of being diagnosed with childhood schizophrenia? Like, one out of a billion or something like that? It's very, very rare. 
like maybe two out of a million. Do you blame me and your biological father for giving you schizophrenia? No, I don't blame anyone. It's that was their life. I'm in my life, and I gotta control my life the way that I control my life. Right. Now we've had you in therapy. We've had you in with psychiatrists. We've had you with social workers. The whole nine yards throughout your whole entire life. Would you say that helped you? It it helped me, but every time that I bring up a situation that I'm going through, they would uh, keep on like talking over about it over and over and over again. Even if I say like. Yeah, I fixed that area, and then they talk it over and over again, and then I get annoyed. Then I just let you talk, then, because you know, like how to, what I'm thinking most of the time, because we do talk. Uh, you don't, you and Dad don't like um when I hide stuff like hide feelings or anything like that because then you can't help. Right. So, we have a model in this house, what you can't change, you you adapt to, what you adapt to, you can change, right? Yeah, I don't know what it means, but, yeah. <laughs> you have schizophrenia, can mm -hmm. you change that? If I work hard enough, I can make it look like I changed it, but no. But you live without medication. Mm-hmm. How did you... How bad do you need your medication? Not that bad anymore. Why? Because you and Dad were constant on the uh, helping me out in time, helping me out in time to time situations where I need helped and trained into how I'm supposed or not supposed to like what would the smartest area of be. be. So, basically what you're saying is, let's take a situation where, here, I'm going to move sideways. You can move closer. Sorry, we're rearranging, so he remains focused. Um, but, Dad and I have always made it very clear that you can't change having schizophrenia, but you can, you can control it, not let it control you. What would you say, I talk louder than you do, <laughs> what would you say your best attributes to, now remember, attributes is, <laughs> you, I was just about to ask what that is. Okay, so you remember in um, Mockingbird, or Mockingjay, that fucking uh, game where they have to... Um, fight for the death. Yeah. You okay? And that lady go her do her sister got called up and she says I attribute I want to do it. So like a tribute offering, is like offering some or right standing or standing up, up and doing something. How do you say? How do you think you attribute schizophrenia into your daily life with, like, having a girlfriend, having friends, going to school and learning? What do you mean? How do does schizophrenia affect? Your friends, your schooling, your girlfriend, your home life. Home life, it's pretty okay as long as long as me and Dad doesn't get in an argument about some stupid stuff because we both do that. <laughs> Which that's one of the f funner things about. And then, uh, like with my girlfriend. She knows about it, but I don't usually show much at school because, well, judgmental kids, like always. Right. And, well, 
doesn't really bug much, but it does, like, I wouldn't say harm, but it does at a bad day where I'm just over here fidgeting, shaking both my leg and my fingertips. Right. It's kind of noticeable, so there's, like, one, two of my friends that knows every, almost everything of my, uh, little tapagy thingies, and then shaking the leg and why I do it, and they really just, like, they just stay in back and, like, talk. They joke around with me. They tried to pull you out of it. Yeah. What happens when somebody interrupts your fidgety time and you're in a bad head case at that time? There's only one person that found out that. So, <laughs> if you're in a bad fidgety space because your head's in a bad space, what are some of the things that we have taught you to do? Uh, kind of... Ask the teacher if I can go to the restroom, calm down, or walk in the uh, hallway for a little bit because it is in my IEP, and all my teachers know that. So when they see it, they also have done that this year. Uh, middle deal, and my eye is itchy, god dang. How did you get the bruise on you? Huh? I have a bruise. <laughs> Get the bruise on my arm. Uh, how did what? I have no idea. Did you hit it? I don't know. So you live in a different world, basically. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things that is different from reality in your brain? Uh, different from reality, pretty much. In my own world, anything is achievable. Anything is possible, and almost everything can happen. Explain. Like, in my own world, you can use everything to put together. Like, if you take... uh, In my headspace, I would say that you could... No, this is going into anime and all that. I know some people don't watch it, but I do. You... You can merge Goku and Sonic together, Goku and Luffy, which are two different animes, and a lot of people would get ticked off at me because it's combining the animes. Right. But the ending results is awesome, and I think it's pretty cool. And then, like, sometimes I just, like, I would dream that, or I would space-time deal, or like think that I'm like a main character in an anime or cartoon or anything like that but I keep it in here and just keep on uh, coming up with the story as it goes on so basically what you're saying is you have superpowers in your head when in reality you don't Mm -hmm. is there any other thing besides anime that (laughs) yes (laughs) There's also times where I'm just, like, if I have, like, I would, like, think of multiple different ways where I'd be able to earn up money and then put it in other things and then earn up all, earn up even more money by u- using the other things to pretty much becoming a young millionaire and then placing out each order that I would buy with it and that I would build with that. Right. So basically in your mind you're an um, uh, you're on your way to become a millionaire Mm. even though in reality you're as broke as I am. Yep. No money. Hold on. I might have a wrapper in my pocket. Yeah, I have a wrapper. Anyone want a wrapper? (laughs) Hold on. Do I have anything else in my pocket? I don't know. So... Questions of the day. Do you think finding a job is going to be easy with schizophrenia? No, because, like... Now, this is the part where I can somewhat see how Sis is thinking, but in a different reality. 
Now, boss, the bosses will be kind of aggravating at first because they want to see how you can work in tough situations because there are some bad and good days of a job. But me, I think it would be hard to keep my cool and not curse out the boss or the other people. So what would you say your best advice for people suffering with schizophrenia is? Well, my best advice, well, I've seen multiple ads on even my phone or anything else where it could take maybe ten dollars to start some where you can double that ten dollars they're scams baby not all of them they're scams baby but they're on commercial <laughs> they're scams baby okay but still yeah like stuff like youtube or um some other thing like being a gamer or even playing challenges on your phone where you get money or on the Xbox or some other stuff because I do know they put out challenges for you to do that and then you redeem the code and okay becoming a gamer or YouTuber or something like that it probably so what you're trying to say if I if I got this correct is don't let anything stop you from doing what you want to do yeah just be you do you now, a lot of people say people with schizophrenia is violent. Would you agree with that? Halfway. Why? Because if they can control it like I can, they're not violent until you push too many triggers. Right. Then they become violent. Right. Now, how many years have you been bullied? Uh... What grade did the bullying start? Fart grade. <laughs> no, uh, I do believe, like, second grade. First grade. Right. So you've been bullied for... And... Uh, I had, Nine. I didn't really start um, getting much friends until, like, I gained one friend that was a true friend. That was TJ, which you remember TJ. Right. And then I gained Tony and some others, and I had my own little friend group. But that didn't start until, well, it started in uh, elementary. But that was only one friend. Then it... The bullying stu kept on going until, like, freaking... This year? No, nah, not the... Well, yeah, this year, but... Um... Where I started earning a bunch... Or, not a bunch, but more friends is, like... I do believe when I started high school. So, about last year? Mm-hmm. Has being schizophrenic affected your schooling? I mean, it has, because, like, you could be in the middle of, like, you could be in the middle of doing some assignment, and as the teacher's explaining the assignment for half of the class, you start losing patience, which I know some, I know me, I don't have patience with anything, so I would start getting aggravated now. I don't think that's special needs. I think that's my anger issues. <laughs> but special needs, uh, you would start, like, in the middle of doing that assignment, maybe. You could just stop thinking about that and hear some random person or someone you never met before or seen before right behind you saying, Hey, get up. Do something. Run. Right. Which, you've had that experience where, gotta run, gotta run, gotta run, gotta hide. How, was that scary for you? It was scary for me, and then, like, I don't know how to feel it, like, or how to describe it fully, but when I felt 
the same way that I did, my blood pressure kind of dropped. It dropped and I wasn't walking the same. It was a... It was also the dead of winter, and he had no shoes on. No, that was the first time. I'm talking about the time that I did it in the summer. Right. It felt the same way where it, my entire body felt almost like paper. Like it wasn't really you doing it? Mm-hmm. Um, do, now, a lot of people with schizophrenia... And I know you have this one because you've done it. Do you believe that you're... Okay, so like, my Uncle Gary. He believed that he owned a moose ranch in Minnesota. Like, fully 100% believe that. Is there something you believe that ain't true? Which one? Just a random one. I mean, like, I would, I would fully, like, sometimes when I watch too much of a show or anything like that, I will start copying what they do. Because you fully believe that you live in that video? Or that? Somewhat. Okay. I fully believe that I can learn what's in that video or learn what's in that movie that's how dad actually taught me a little bit of them by showing me martial arts shows right and no not john wick no <laughs> shows like five finger deadly five finger death punch uh i do believe it the other one was called taisu and the other one was called the uh what was it called? The Three Ninjas or some stuff where this guy is... So, there's a style that... Okay, they, yeah, back yeah, to yeah. the question. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I would believe that I play... I would believe that I would... You were a character in the video. able to learn the stuff. Okay, so... Is there anything you would like people to know? Like, what do you mean? Okay, so you know how, like, when I end a video, I end it with giving a positive message? Mm -hmm. You have schizophrenia. Let's give a positive message about schizophrenia. Well, with schizophrenia, in my head, schizophrenia is just a little borderline. You break that borderline, you have achieved something great. But if you achieve that greatness, that makes you a little bit greater. Now that isn't fully. Uh, hello, Coco. Chop chop, chop chop. Okay, I cannot be that close to you. Anyways, let's finish it off. That doesn't like mean that's like grateful because that sounds really mean, <laughs> but like. Schizophrenia is not a thing holding you back. Even if you feel like it, you can break Control it. You can break through certain parts of it. And it will be almost as natural as breathing, so you won't have to worry about, oh no, is this gonna happen? You'll be more enlightened, you can go out, you can have make even more friends because they won't judge you now i understand that because they judge me like a racehorse over the stuff so pretty much the positive side is what you make it on schizophrenia or anything like that amen to that all right we are going to end it here. We hope you have an amazing day. We love you. And Jordan, stay with me. Love y'all. Bye.